so we all start off the new year. You probably all have a list of resolutions. We have resolve, we have plans. I expected to be uh, 20 pounds lighter and 10 years younger looking when I started this year, but <laughs> see how that goes. So our, our goals give us a, a place to reach for, but we see that life happens to us and we don't always get there. And we do get there through our goals. How you do that, this is a proven formula for how to set a goal. It's specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, that 20 pound thing, and time bound. So you have to have a plan around those. But habits, how do you do habits? Habits start with choices. You make a choice. You repeat an action and based on the result of that action, you may repeat that choice yet again. So it looks something like this. You wake up in the morning, you're tired, you go and you make coffee. Ooh, all of a sudden you feel better. So the reward is now you feel ready to start your day. You're apt to repeat that loop every day. You can change a loop, and this is a good illustration of that. Let's say it's the work break habit. You it's the time of day, you go and get a friend, and you go and visit, and you break up the monotony of your day. I like to talk about Febreze a little bit because it originally did not have odor. And until they added odor to it, they could not market it. Once they put that reward odor, it flew off the shelves. So we might want to break old habits or start new habits. And there's a lot of ways you can do that, but one of them is to be very intentional about what it is you want. And what makes a difference in whether somebody is successful or not? My husband jumps out of bed every morning and goes for a run. I lay in bed and listen to national public radio. <laughs> and why, why that difference? This woman, Gretchen Rubin, wrote a great book in which she identified four perspectives or tendencies about habit formation and keeping habits. And we're gonna look at each one of these tendencies. The first one's the obliger. That's the majority of our population. They like to have um, accountability works for them. They do not respond well to their own needs but to outside needs. The questioner is the next group. Um, they work through inner expectations or the expectations they meet. I'm a questioner. If I'm not convinced I want to get out of bed in the morning, it's not happening. <laughs> My husband Ken's an upholder. Upholders get everything done. They respond to inner and outer expectations. So they their strategy is to schedule, and they get anything they want to done. <laughs> we probably all know a few rebels. I think I have a rebel friend in the audience. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> they don't respond to inner or outer expectations. In fact, they resist all expectations, whether it's theirs or someone else's. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> this is not my slide. <laughs> but OK. <laughs> um, it got changed. So <laughs> we'll go to this one. Um, when you want to change a habit, there are several mechanisms you can use for how to make a bad habit into a good habit. Mindfulness, you can monitor it by journaling. Um, you can create a distraction. And you can change your situation. So when you want to do those things, uh, you're going to need awareness, you can adapt, or you can accept the way you are, the way I have. So <laughs> what I want to stress for people is never stop trying. It's attainable regardless of what tendency you are. So you can focus, do one thing at a time, but most importantly, serve yourself, do what's good for you and not for everyone else. Um, you know, every day is a new day. So if you fail today, you get up tomorrow and you start again, but it'll be repetition that will make those habits stick for you. 
I've done a lot of research on habits and the formation of habits. These are the two best uh, references I could point you to.